Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to step back and do more of an introductory get started video when it comes to cursor and test automation. This specifically is going to focus on Playwright. So if you're interested in unit tests, component tests, any other kind of white box tests, check out other videos I have. I'll try to link them in the description below. So this video assumes that a couple things. One is it's not going to explain all aspects of cursor. There's plenty of getting started videos on Cursor, and it also is not going to explain all aspects of Playwright. There's also getting started videos on Playwright. If you're confused about either of those two things, check out all the getting started videos that are up on those. Instead, what it's going to talk specifically about is just how I get started with the Playwright project using Cursor in a code base. So what you can see on the screen is Cursor. A couple things just to start off. If you've never been in it, once again, go check out the videos. But Cursor basically is an augmented coding IDE. It basically writes code for you in many ways. The big caveat of all of this is if you're an engineer, you have to take ownership of the code that's being written. You should never just allow an IDE or AI to write code and then ship it without taking ownership. You're going to get burned. It's not good enough yet to make mistakes. But the way I talk about it is basically if you want a keyboard that types exponentially faster than you could ever possibly type, Cursor is the tool for you. I've produced more high quality code in the last six to eight months than I could have ever possibly produced simply because this thing is a keyboard that types exponentially faster. So when you're in Cursor, the number one tool that you're going to use is this agent or sort of ask mode over here. About six months ago, I was only using ask mode. Ask mode is basically the same thing, but it would not actually do anything. Then as these AI models got better, I switched over to agent mode. And now I only use agent mode because it actually is very good most of the time your different model choices. So most of what I'm doing is in Claude 4.0 Sonnet or 4 Sonnet, excuse me. I sometimes also use O3 or Gemini 2.5 Pro. The, thing, the way to think about models is generally speaking, you'll have the model that you do most of your work in, but sometimes it can get stuck on a problem. You'll want to switch to a different model to have a kind of look at the same problem. They all have different strengths. I know Grok, for example, is one that just came out that supposedly is the best. Um, there's also a lot of model fatigue. So I tend to just use Claude 4 on Sonnet because it's what I do the most of. A couple other things to think about when we're on the cursor side before we get started. Your at symbol is going to be super, super important. So for example, when it comes to failures, I will do at terminal and I'll point it at the terminal oftentimes, right? This allows you to very quickly point it at information that's in the terminal, which if we're running a lot of our playwright tests, you're going to see results in the terminal. I will do at rules a lot of the time. So I have cursor rules, which is my back end. I also will have playwright rules, all the rules of how you want it to behave, you can put in the rules. Also, what you can do is you can drag and drop websites into it. So so if we go get an example website, for example, I can just pull this or close LinkedIn and I can drop it in. Oh, interesting. I didn't realize because it's probably a local. So let's just go to convex docs. So for example, if I want to drop in some docs in convex, which is the back end that I'm using, you can just drop it in and now it'll read that URL. Right? So it, there's a lot of these tools that are helpful and useful. Most of the, we, what's important to understand about Cursor, more than anything, is that you want to give it as much context as possible and you want it to, and you want to double check its work. Excuse me, sorry, I lost train of thought for a second. So that is the Cursor side of things. On the Playwright side of things, what we're going to be doing today is an end-to-end -end getting started suite. That's going to be smoke and sanity tests. I will add a couple of tests. I'll do a page object model and then maybe I'll add some database seeding at the end, depending on how long this video goes. And the goal here is really just to provide a how do you go from nothing to an end-to-end -end suite with cursor and a playwright test. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm going to pretend that I don't have access to the code base because generally speaking, and actually, I wonder if I should just make a new blank project. How about this? I'm going to make a new blank project that actually does not have access to the code base just to see how that does. So give me two seconds. Okay, so we have a new blank project. So this assumes you don't have access to the code base. So like I'll do a different video on how to use cursor and automation when you have access to the code base because frankly, it's fantastic and it makes your life super, super easy. But for a lot of the QA people that don't have access to the code base, what we'll do is we'll focus on basically like, how do you do all this without access to the code base, right? What we can do is let's do first a getting started, kick off. So playwright.dev, you can go to it. You have their docs their way to get started npm init do typescript we'll put it in tests we're gonna not want github and then we're gonna install the browsers okay so it's installed first thing that we want to do just to get started is we're going to comment out this oops oops 
just so it's only running in here. All right, cool. All right, it's gonna do this example. So the first thing first, when it comes to Playwright, once again, this is not a Playwright demo, but Playwright is something that interacts with the browser. You need to add a bunch of locators. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna start adding our page object models, right? So what we can do is we're gonna add a new folder called POM, and this is gonna be the models. You go to your page. In this case, we're gonna to go to the sign-in page. You right click, you inspect, you look at your element tree, you right click, you copy Audi HTML, you paste, you then grab a screenshot, you put it in, assuming that worked, it did, and you say, write me a new POM file for the sign in page for all major elements. So this one task used to take like a decent amount of headachey time. Now with a screenshot and the DOM, it's exponentially faster. The thing to recognize though, is that this is going to get some of these wrong, like absolutely get some of these wrong. So you have to test them. You can't assume that they're gonna be right, but as you do it, and as it gives feedback, it will get them right and it'll clean itself up. Remember the point I made about the fact that this is just a keyboard that types like exponentially faster than you can ever type? See case study one right here, which is it's writing a sign in page. Now, before you all tell me this is basic, this is so easy, this is basic. Once again, this is a getting started video because the examples that I did in other videos, people said were too complex and they wanted like more of just a getting started video. If you want to see this exact same thing when it comes to the actual like examples, I will make more complex videos. But for the sake of this, once again, it makes total sense that this is beginning in basic because it's a getting started video. You can see too, it's already tried to be helpful and add test cases, right? So should display all the pams correctly. Now, once again, you have to understand QA. This right here is not an end-to-end -end test. This is a component test. This should not be an end-to-end -end test. This also should not be an end-to-end -end test. This not should be an end-to-end -end test. Almost none of these should be end-to-end -end tests. Almost all of these should be component tests for the sign-in page. So like normally speaking, what I would do is I would say this. Most of these are covered by component tests. Only delete and leave the end-to-end. -end. And it's generally speaking smart enough to delete and leave the end-to-end -end ones. And we'll see if it does that. Also notice, I just gave context, sign in page shot spec. I didn't tell it what to look in. I didn't tell it what file. I just gave it my ask and I gave it context and it's gonna do its thing and we should see how, what the update's gonna be. Cool, and it updated. So should complete the sign in flow with valid creds. Good, should allow, good, fine, but probably doesn't go in this file, okay. And it does have a method for sign in. Let's go look at that. Fill name, how about sign in? Okay, yeah. Cool. All right, next, what we're going to tell it, and the base URL is this most likely will go into the Playwright config file and update the base URL. Or in this case, oh, interesting. All right, it's not my favorite. What it did is it went to the go to here. So what we'll do instead is set the base URL in the Playwright config. All right, while it's doing that, I'm going to grab a power cord. Okay, I have grabbed a power cord and it has the base URL. This is just going to be bad at work with web.com and this will be password. I can't remember if it's caps or not, so we'll see. Did it never finish downloading the browsers? Huh. That's interesting. Let's kill that. Let's see what happens. Okay, cool. All right, it ran. Once again, there's no assertions here, right? So actually one of the things about this test that it wrote, right, is really not that it's going to sign in. But once again, we didn't really have any assertions. So I'm just going to tell it just to run this. And then I'm going to just confirm the password. So we're going to run this. So we're going to run it in headed. And my guess is it'll open on a different screen. It's opening on a different screen. It thinks it logged in. So let's actually run it on debug. All right, we filled the email, we clicked sign in. Okay, cool. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is ben at workwithwoop.com password. We're going to do this. We're going to go here. We're gonna do the same inspect. 
We're then going to grab the same body with the outer HTML. And then let's go and we'll say, now add a POM file for the left nav. We're going to paste it in. I didn't do a screenshot in this case, normally just because I think it's smart enough in my perspective to figure out what is the left nav. Also, it tends to overdo the number of expects, frankly. I probably would not use this number of expects. Header. So it's choices here, and this is all personal preference. I've seen some people, when it comes to the clicks, just want to pass in what the sort of left nav item is wanted. Other people I've seen want to do individual methods. The biggest thing to understand is that you should have an opinion about what the code should be when it's produced. Like this, for example, generally, this is just a component test on the left nav and really never going to be something that I do in the end to end. Same thing with all these two. So we can probably go ahead and tell it that. Some of these are useful for component tests. Get rid of the access. Okay. We'll see what it does. I actually don't know what it's going to do. Good. It already recognized it and wanted to get some of the text-specific stuff gone and some of the other things gone, which is exactly useful. Verification for text content gone. Yes. It removed 125 lines of code. Oh, I didn't pick up the fact that it's trying to do this. Should display navigation. Once again, that's probably all component tests. Once again, so... Actually, nearly all of these tests when it comes to the left nav arguably are component tests and probably going to get deleted. But for the sake of this, let's go ahead and pull this test case in and say verify our logged in by seeing the left nav. Not the best way, but it's a good getting started way. It imported the left nav, which was great. It instantiated the left nav, which is correct and it awaits it to be visible, which is also correct. If we go ahead and run now 15, it passed, right? So we're now verifying the left nav. Cool. Let's keep going. Ticket page. So let's go to the create ticket page. Okay. Inspect body right here. Copy outer HTML. Now make a POM for the create ticket page. We're just going to go ahead and pull the screenshot in. Let's also tell it ignore the UF nav. And then for the sake of this, what we can do is we can pull in the POM so it has context. All right. What it's first doing is it's looking for the existing POM files to understand the structure. It also will see that the left nav is already covered. Okay. So like once again, one of the things that I can guarantee is going to happen is it's going to overdo what I would want to do for the end-to-end -end test, right? So I already have unit tests in theory on this form or integration tests or contract tests. I also have component tests. I also have contract tests between the front end and the back end. So really, what do I need this form to do? All I need this form to do is show that the end-to-end -end flow is hooked up and works one time, largely speaking, unless there's just some like edge case that I want to add. So what it's going to do most likely is it's going to do overkill on these. I probably could have just made a better prompt to just tell it that up front. And once again, this entire video assumes you don't have access to the code base. This entire process is that much faster if you have access to the code base, because rather than having to rely on the browser, you're just going to basically point it to the different aspects of the code base or point at the presence of unit test and integration test and tell it to work around those. And it has great. Cool. Once again, right? So it already made the mistake. So this is where you would probably put like a cursor rule in place and we can even ask it to write a cursor rule. Let's see how that does in a second. These are component tests. This is an end to end suite. Clean it up and all right, while it's working, we're going to go look at one other quick thing. Basically, okay, that's right. So this suite will not expose API calls, I don't believe. Yeah, it doesn't. So like one of the next things that I would show you is going to be like the API side of things, I wonder. Wiki does Wiki network. Cool. All right. There's probably a post call in here. Get for Michigan. Okay, we'll come back to that in a second. Now it needs to add the missing fits to the palm. Cool. Data. Cool. Okay, let's do this now just for the sake of showing you guys how to do this. Let's assume that I don't want data within the test case. So instead.
instead, let's do, we'll say move data to a, and we can even just make a blank folder actually. Basically, if we think we are gonna end up reusing ticket data, so for example, if we're gonna either seed the data later or we're going to throw it in through an API call or something like that, we want the data separated from the test case or a generally just good practice is my understanding. So you can see in the data folder, there's now this and it'll go and update the test case. Cool. All right, so it has now create ticket, fill ticket line, it's pulling the data in and then it should be importing. Yep, it's already importing all the data right there and it's moved all the data over here. So now all your other test cases can use this data and it's a little bit cleaner. So the whole kind of concept of just pulling stuff out also applies to API calls as well, right? So if we're gonna copy just the curl for this, and then we could say, now make me like a page object model, but for API endpoints and the actions, here is an example to start with. We're gonna paste in the endpoint, and then we'll just drop it into here. It should, if it's good, it should use basically playwright's request functionality, and then it should make me basically an object to interact with the different API endpoints, and it should start with that. Now it's gonna do a base API file that does all your set of cookies, everything like that. I don't think I like what it's doing, actually. We'll see. Interesting. So basically, it ignored the Wikipedia piece, and it's just trying to make stuff up. So this is a really good example of AI's risks. It's just completely making stuff up right now. So in this case, what I would do is I'd go back here and then I'd basically say, here's an example to start with. The current app does not expose an API. So just use this wiki to make an example file. And then what we can also do, so let's choose for the sake of this, go to playwright. I want to say it's request. Yeah. No, this is not it. Yeah, this is it, I think. All right. This is an important thing about cursor. It's going to say continue and revert. When I did continue and revert, it's like it'll basically wipe out all of the changes it just made. It's a really useful tool. So now, even though it went down the wrong direction into that a bunch of code, it basically did not, all that code's deleted, which is genuinely, it's like I committed it and then I just wiped it, which is great. I just reset the commit. I still don't like what it's doing. So like once again, we can catch it, but... We will see. Test examples. Where is it putting this? Okay, wiki API. Get a. Okay, this is not bad. No, this is not bad. Okay, not bad. Get page info. Okay, not bad. Not terrible. So the point being is that like this same piece, it ripped it. It can rip API calls just as easily as it can rip the browser. Okay, that is at 29 minutes. I hope this was enough of a getting started video. I could keep going if you want. Like for example, I could have it start to write test data, but just for the sake of keeping videos somewhat short, I'd love feedback. Just let me know if this was helpful, if this is the kind of thing that yeah, you want to do if you don't want to use. Once again, if you watch this and you're just like, hey, this is overwhelming, I am starting to try to do some more workshops. I also run a company called Loop QA that does embedded engineering services, really focused on trying to upskill teams into doing some of these things. Would love feedback. It goes a long way if you don't mind liking and subscribing to the video. And with that, we'll see you tomorrow. Talk soon. Bye.